Hi there, welcome to the 47th episode of the Synth Project, where we are building a synth together. In this episode and in the next, we will work on a new module that is very useful for creating special sound effects, as well as for generating random sequences of notes and sounds. I am talking about the noise generator, the one we will build will be capable of producing six different types of noise, each with its own specific frequency attributes and sound appeals. Let's not wait any longer and start diving into the project right away. The noise generator I am proposing will primarily produce white noise, which has a flat frequency response across the entire audible range. From this base we will use specific filters to shape the frequency spectrum to obtain five additional types of noise, the pink noise, the red noise, also known as brown or brownianian noise, the blue noise, the violet noise, also called purple noise, and finally the green noise. In this picture, sourced from Wikipedia, you can see the frequency spectra of the five major types of noise. The one in the center represents the white noise, which has a flat spectrum across all audible frequencies. This is the classic background noise we hear from an out-of-tune AM radio, or the noise coming from an old TV speaker with no channel tuned in. White noise is often used as a masking noise to cover up more disruptive ambient sounds. Pink noise is similar to white noise, but its spectrum amplitude decreases at a slope of minus 3 dB per octave. This gives it a richer presence of lower frequencies compared to white noise. It resembles the background sounds you might experience on an airplane, rain hitting on a metal roof, or the hum of a refrigerator when the compressor is running. Red noise, also known as brown noise, decreases at a rate of minus 6 dB per octave and contains even more low-frequency content than the pink noise. Due to its depth, it resembles the sounds of rumbling thunder, strong winds, or crackling fire. On the high-frequency side of the white noise, we have blue noise, whose spectrum amplitude increases at a slope of plus 3 dB per octave. As expected, it contains more high-frequency content than the white noise, giving it a sharp hissing quality similar to the sound of a computer fan or steam escaping from a broken pipe. Violet noise, also known as purple noise, has an even higher pitch than the blue noise, with its spectral amplitude increasing at a slope of plus 6 dB per octave. It resembles the high-pitched hiss of water flowing through an open faucet or other sharp sibilant sounds. And finally, we have the green noise, which is quite different from the others. Unlike the noises with the spectra that slope continuously in one direction, Green noise has a peak around the frequencies of the human voice, which is also the range of many natural sounds. Common examples include the sound of heavy rainfall, the rolling of ocean waves pushed by the wind, or the gentle rustling of wind through a forest. Essentially, green noise is centered around 500 Hz, with an amplitude dropping at a slope of minus 60 dB per octave in both the low and high frequency directions. Besides the white noise, which we will need to generate from scratch using a dedicated noise source, all the other colored noises can be created by processing the white noise through filters that shape its frequency spectrum appropriately. To generate the pink noise, we will use a low-pass filter with a slope of minus 3 dB per octave. For red noise, we will need a low-pass filter set to minus 6 dB per octave. To create a blue noise, we will use a high-pass filter with a slope of plus 3 dB per octave, and, for pilot noise, a high-pass filter with a slope of plus 6 dB per octave. Finally, to produce green noise, we will use a band-pass filter centered around 500 Hz, with slopes of minus 6 dB per octave on either side. While achieving slopes of 
minus plus and 60 dB per octave is straightforward, achieving a slope of plus minus 3 dB per octave is more challenging, as simple filters cannot produce such slopes directly. To approximate these slopes, we will need to use a series of filters, each operating in different sections of the spectrum. And we will combine these filters utilizing the middle range, where the slope average is around 3 dB per octave, while transitioning from flat to 6 dB per octave. Consequently, the border plots for the filters used to create a pink and blue noise will not be perfectly linear, Instead, they will have a slightly undulated shape. In a moment, we will discuss how to achieve this effect as we dive into the schematic for the noise generator synth module. Here is the full schematic of the module. At first glance, you will notice a large number of resistors, capacitors and several of pumps. This apparent complexity is expected as the circuit is primarily composed of filters. However, as we break it down piece by piece, you will see that it is much easier to understand than it initially appears. The first part we want to look at is the actual white noise generator. The noise is created by the PN junction of Zener D1 when reverse biased at a voltage of 12 volt. Technically, since the breakdown voltage is above 8 volt, this diode should be called an avalanche diode, rather than a Zener diode, but this is the way everybody calls it. When the breakdown voltage is reached, this kind of diodes undergo an avalanche reaction at the PN junction that brings the current to increase rapidly, limited only by the series resistor. All avalanche diodes have an intrinsic noise generated by the chaotic movement of the charges in the junction region, this noise, however, is not constant and typically reaches the maximum at a particular value of current, while remaining low at any other current values. In my experience, the noise generated by this diode is the closest to white noise that we can obtain with a semiconductor. Many sources also suggest using the base emitter junction of a transistor as a noise generator, but that kind of noise, in my experience, is much closer to pink noise than white noise. In my case, I experimented with several semiconductors and with various series resistor values. A 10 volt Zener with a 47K series resistor is what gave me the best results in terms of spectrum distribution and noise level. This particular configuration, in fact, allowed me to obtain a nearly perfect white noise signal with an amplitude of about 200 mV peak to peak. The noise is extracted from the cathode of the Zener diode via capacitor C4, which primarily serves to block the DC bias voltage of the diode. From there, the signal is fed into a low signal amplifier built around the transistor Q1, biased by resistors R4 and R5. Capacitor C3 provides negative feedback at radio frequencies, helping to filter out high frequency noise that we don't need in the output signal. The amplified noise is available at the collector of transistor Q1, where it is extracted through capacitor C5, once again removing any DC component introduced by the transistor's biasing. The white noise generated is then amplified by op-amp U1, which boosts the signal to approximately 10 volt peak to peak. However, this amplification may introduce a DC offset at the op-amp's output, and to eliminate this offset, we use an adder circuit made of R2, R3 and R1, which combines the amplified noise signal with a DC voltage of opposite polarity, cancelling out the unwanted DC component. Once the circuit is assembled, the trimput should be adjusted to minimize the DC component at U1's output with the help of an oscilloscope. The 10 volt peak to peak white noise is then made available at the output of the noise generator module, and it is also used as the input for the various filters that shape it into the other noise covers. Let's examine each of these filters one by one. Let's start with the pink noise filter. As mentioned earlier, 
Pink noise has a spectrum reaching low frequency content with amplitude decreasing at a slope of minus 3 dB per octave as frequency increases. This means that to produce pink noise we simply need to apply a low pass filter to the white noise, attenuating the high frequencies at a rate of minus 3 dB per octave. However, while this concept is simple in theory, it's challenging to implement it in practice. Filters typically create slopes in multiple of 6 dB per octave, making it impossible to create a single filter with a slope of exactly 3 dB per octave. To solve our problem, we will have to use multiple filters instead of one and make sure that each filter acts in a certain range of frequency without affecting the others. We also need to make each filter work in the center of the region where its slope is changing from 0 to 6 dB per octave, where the slope is actually around 3 dB per octave. By combining multiple filters designed in this way, we can create an overall filter with a body plot resembling the one shown in this diagram, which approximates a steady slope of minus 3 dB per octave. This circuit achieves the desired pink noise filter. The white noise signal enters through pin 3 of the leftmost op-amp, which is configured as a buffer to prevent loading the white noise generator. The buffered noise is then output from pin 1 and fed directly into a chain of three low-pass filters, each designed to operate at a different cutoff frequency and limited to a specific frequency range. Resistor R8 is common to all filters. The first filter is composed by that R8 and the capacitor SWE12. Resistor R9 confines this filter's effect to the region around its cutoff frequency, where the slope transitions between 0 and minus 6 dB per octave. The second low pass filter is made from R8 and capacitors C8, C9, C10, and C11 all in parallel which together provide an effective capacitance of 650 nanofarad, a value that isn't readily available commercially. This filter's effect is limited to its cutoff range by resistors R10 and R11 in series, equivalent to a single 1.3k resistor. The third and final filter is composed again by R8 and by capacitors C16, C15, C14 and C13 for a total capacitance of 56 nanofarad. Resistor R13 restricts this filter's action to its designated range. The combined output of these three filters is then fed into another op-amp which amplifies the pink noise back up to the target amplitude of 10 volt peak to peak. This maximum amplitude is only achieved on the low frequency side of the spectrum, of course, as expected for pink noise. Let's now take a look at the filter for the red noise. Our goal here is to shape the white noise input so that it has a slope of minus 6 dB per octave, similar to the pink noise but with even more emphasis to the low frequencies, as shown in this graph. Achieving this slope is relatively straightforward as it can be done with a simple low-pass filter with a minus 6 dB octave slope. In the schematic you will see that we once again take the white noise directly from its source, to prevent any loading effects on the white noise generator, we buffer this input with the op-amp U3.1. The buffered noise output from 3.1 is then passed through a low-pass filter, consisting of resistor R15 and capacitor C20. This filter is responsible for shaping the spectrum to create the red noise signal, attenuating the high frequencies at minus 6 dB per octave. After filtering, the signal goes to an amplifier stage implemented by op-amp U3.2. The gain of this amplifier is determined by resistors R16 and R17, and it amplifies the filter the red noise signal to a peak amplitude of 10V, consistent with the other noise outputs. 
The final rate noise output is taken from pin 7 and it passes through capacitor C21 to remove any remaining DC component introduced during amplification. The blue noise is basically the reverse of the pink noise. Rather than decreasing at minus 3 dB per octave, it increases of plus 3 dB per octave, which emphasizes the higher frequencies. To achieve this effect from the white noise input, we need a high-pass filter with a plus 3 dB per octave slope. And like the case of the pink noise filter, we need to get creative to obtain such a filter. In this case, I decided to go with a full-fledged active high-pass filter built around op-amp U4.2. Since the filtering process will attenuate the overall amplitude of the signal, I incorporated a buffer with gain in front of the filter, using the other half of the same IC U4.1 to maintain the signal strength. In here, resistors R18 and R19 established gain. R18 has a high enough resistance to prevent excessive loading on the white noise generator, and R19 is selected to provide the necessary amplification. Like the filter for the pink noise, this filter has also three stages. The first stage is made of R20 and C26. The second stage is made of R20 and the parallel of C25, C27, C28 and C29. The third stage is made of resistor R20 and capacitors C24, C30, C31 and C32. To ensure that each filter stage acts primarily in its designated frequency range, I added the resistors R21, the series of R22 and R24, and the resistor R23 for range limitation. The combination of these three stages approximates a plus 3 dB per octave slope across the desired frequency range, providing a frequency response that resembles blue noise. The final output is a high-frequency rich noise, perfect for creating a hissing sound, similar to sounds like a steam escaping or a computer fan running at high speed. The violet noise filter is designed as the inverse of the red noise filter. Where red noise has a spectrum that decreases with a slope of minus 6 dB per octave, violet noise, also known as purple noise, as a spectrum that increases at plus 6 dB per octave. This means that violet noise emphasizes high frequency even more than blue noise, creating a sharply defined hissing or high-pitched sound. This effect can be achieved using a simple high-pass filter with a plus 6 dB per octave slope, which is straightforward to design and build. As I have done for the previous filters, the violet noise filter has a buffer stage to decouple it from the white noise generator. This buffer is created around op-amp U5.1. Then there is the simple high-pass filter made of C35 and R25. Finally, there is an amplification stage to bring the peak value of the noise amplitude to the required 10 pot peak-to-peak. Let's now talk about the green noise filter. As we said already, the green noise is centered around the mid-range frequencies, specifically those that are most sensitive to the human ear, which is approximately in the 500 Hz range. For this reason, to obtain it from the white noise, we have to use a bandpass filter centered at 500 Hz. This filter will emphasize the mid-range frequencies while attenuating both the lower and higher frequencies at a steady rate of minus 6 dB per octave on each side of the center frequency. Here is a picture that shows exactly how such filter is supposed to behave. A 6 dB per octave bandpass filter can be easily made by connecting in series a low-pass filter followed by a high-pass filter. Unfortunately, doing so cuts in half the overall slope of the bandpass filter. To address this problem, instead of putting in series two first-order filters, we use two second-order filters. Since second-order filters have a slope of 12 dB per octave, 
the overall filter will have a slope of 6 dB per octave, as desired. Now that we have these 6 noises, we need to make them available for use in the synth. One way to do that is to create on the front panel as many jack sockets as necessary, one for each of these signals. However, it occurred to me that it is very unlikely that we will need to use several noises at the same time. So, rather than having them all available on the panel, I decided to use a rotary switch to select just one noise among the six, then put it through an amplifier with variable gain and use its output for the module. In this way, we can select one noise at a time, adjust the level of the signal the way we want, and send it to any other module of the synth, depending on what we like to do. And uh, to make things more versatile, I decided to add two of these circuits, so we can have two noise outputs simultaneously, and be able to select them independently of each other. Headers H2 and H3 in the schematic are the ones where the two rotary switches will be connected. The switches will receive each the whole set of noises on pins 1 through 6, and will emit the selected noise on pin 8 here indicated with a label COMMON. From there, the two signals go each into its own level regulator, made of op-amps U7 and U8. The gain of each regulator can be adjusted from 0V peak-to-peak up to 10V peak-to-peak through the logarithmic potentiometers RP1 and RP2. H4 and H5 are the pin headers to which we will be able to connect the two output jack sockets on the front panel. And that's it, this is the whole schematic used for this new noise generator module for our analog synth. Let's now go to the lab to see the prototype I made based on this schematic and see how it works by listening to the six different noises. This prototype was made by me while designing the various parts of the noise generator, one element at a time. This section here, on the smaller breadboard, is the white noise generator, along with the op-amp amplificator and adder, which minimizes the DC component of the signal output, tuning appropriately the multi-tard trim pot. Here in the back corner you can see the zener diode used as the actual noise generator. Going around the circuit, here is the section that makes up the minus 3 dB per octave filter for the pink noise. Note over here the many resistors and capacitors of the three stages filter. On the right side there is the filter for the red noise, very simple since it is just made of a single first order low pass filter. Next to it there is the filter for the blue noise, with its several capacitors and resistors to create the three stages high pass filter at plus 3 dB per octave. On its right side there is the circuitry for one of the two level regulators. The two dark wires on pin 2 and 6 go to the logarithmic potentiometer installed on the back panel of my breadboard holder. On the breadboard toward the top of the circuit we have the filter for the violet noise to the left, while on the right there is the filter for the green noise, another element full of passive components used to obtain a bandpass filter with slopes of minus 6 dB per octave. The output of the regulator located on the previous breadboard is connected to my lab mini audio amplifier, which is also connected to my lab loudspeaker. This way, we can hear the noise directly coming from the prototype under test. This one is the potentiometer I was talking about, which we can practically use to increase and decrease the volume of each of the noises. The rotary switch is currently set to output the white noise, so let's increase the volume to hear it. Now let's switch to the pink noise. Here is the red noise.
Now the blue noise. The violet noise. And finally, the green noise. That's all for today. Now we just need to wait for me to receive the PCB I designed from the factory where I commission all my PCB work. Once the PCB arrives, we will go through the whole process of assembling the components on it, designing and 3D printing the case, putting everything together, installing the new module in the Synthrack, and start having some fun with it. See you in the next video, and uh, as usual, Happy experiments!